Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Russell Temple CME Church. Today is Sunday, November 1st, 2020. This is First Sunday, our Communion Sunday. I am your worship leader for today, Exhorter Sherman. Our call to worship this morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We will now have our hymn of praise. There is power in the blood by Brother Foster and Sister Tucker. Good afternoon, Russell Temple. Today, our hymn of praise is going to be on page 137 in your hymnals. There is power in the blood. You know the words? Come on and sing along with us. Dylan Sherman. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered up under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, right hand God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come judge quick, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the, resur the resurrection of the body, and life after, after everlasting. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dylan, for that wonderful reading of the affirmation of faith. We will now have the invocation by myself, Exhorter Sherman. If we can all bow our heads, Lord, wonderful, marvelous, matchless, Lord, we come to you lifting your name on high. You said if we cast your cares on you, Lord, that you will sustain us. We come to you, Lord, just laying all our issues out on the carpet, Lord, knowing that you are in the midst of all that we do. We come asking you today for peace, Lord, for you see what's going on in the world, but not just a physical, but a spiritual peace as well. Not something that we can see that's been settled, but something that we can feel as well, Lord. Lord, we come to you asking you for compassion, Lord. We come to you asking you for healing, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just touch each and every one of us that's in this service today, Lord. Lord, we ask that as our pastor come forward, Lord, that you just touch her and let your word come forward, Lord. Lord, let us learn something that we can take away that for us to grow in and to share with others, Lord. Well, Lord, we ask that your spirit just come through to this service, Lord, and spread like wildfire, Lord, for this is my prayer in your precious son, Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will now have the ministry of music, Trust Me, my sister Bernice Golden. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path.
Thank you. Thank you so much for that beautiful song. Uh, that rendition, it was beautiful. You should put everything in the hands of the Lord and everything will be all right. So we want to thank Sister Golden, Brother Foster, and Sister Sari for that beautiful rendition. We will now have a video regarding our vote. And then Sister Vanessa Green will come before us to talk about your voice is your vote. Amen. Each of us has a moral responsibility if we are of voting age and if we are registered to participate in that decision. And so I come to California today and I'll leave here and go to Chicago and then to Detroit and then Baltimore, Maryland and New York to say the same thing. I come here to urge every person under the sound of my voice to go to the polls on the 3rd of November and vote your conviction. Now, I know you are intelligent people, and I don't need to tell you who you should vote for. I don't have any fear about that. You know who to vote for. <laughs> I'm just asking you to vote. Now, just if you need. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure from the clip that was previously shown, it resonates with us today. The words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. back in 1964, we're still experiencing the same evils of racism, white supremacists, and just violence against the poor and the oppressed, the least, the last, and the lost. Please, we're two days away from election day 2020. If you have not already voted early, please go to the polls. Take a lunch, take a seat, whatever you need to do. Our forefathers bled, died too often, too much for us to sit on our laurels. So please, once again, election day is this upcoming Tuesday, November 3rd. Polling times in Virginia, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m the district and Maryland from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please vote. We need a shift in the atmosphere, a shift in this administration. Every vote counts. Please, your voice is your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Green, and you are correct. Our voice is our vote, so please, you heard the plea, get out and vote. We will now have our tithes and offering appeal by Sister Harriet Anderson. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I would just like to thank everyone for continuing to pay your tithes and offerings. As I mentioned before, we are not in the building physically, but we, the church still must continue. We need to keep our building functioning uh, so that when we finally go back, everything will be ready for us. So uh, we ask that you also continue to pay on your pledges that you made. And um, I, I want to say that there are several ways that we can uh, pay our tithes. You know, of course, we can mail them in to Russell Temple, CME Church, 507 North Alfred Street, Alexandria, Virginia, 223. One four. We can also pay by Givelify, and if uh, some of you that live that live near the church, if you want to drop it off, you can drop it in, drop it off in the mail mail, mail slot. But we accept that too, because somebody will pick it up. And if you can't do that, just contact one of the stewards, and uh, they will be glad to pick it up for you. Okay. So can we just have a little word of prayer, Lord? We thank you for this day. We thank you for our families and our friends. We thank you for our blessings. And we would like to give you a portion back. These and all other blessings, we ask you in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Nooney, for that wonderful plea and prayer. We will now have our presentation of certificates by Reverend Michelle F. Parker. And welcome to Russell Temple CME Church. As you know, we have completed our 
um, Bible study series entitled God's Amazing Grace. And that was part of my Doctor of Ministry project. And I wanna thank Russell Temple for allowing me to use you to do my research project. But I could not do this project without the help of those who were undergirding me as we together paved the way to make it come to fruition. When we first started out, it was on paper and it was nebulous. But as each person began to add their remarks, their comments, their questions, it began to take shape and it began to take form. And I'm so grateful for these six people who dared to be committed to over one year of working with me to fashion and form what came to be God's Amazing Grace Bible Study Series. And so I wanna say hats off to Kimberly, Sister Kimberly Carter, Sister Jonna Hardy, Sister Louise Hardy, Sister Lillian Harris, Sister Diana Murphy, and Sister Veronica Hayes. These are they who stuck with me for over one year. And they told me when I graduate, they're graduating with me and they're gonna earn an AA degree. <laughs> Amen. Because they have worked and they have been so committed to this process and to this project. And we have seen the fruit of our labor by the comments and the transference of the information in church school and as well as in our conversations. And so I am so grateful to these six people. And so we wanted to recognize you today. And so you will receive a certificate that says Bible study certificate of appreciation awarded to for your support as a context associate for the study series, God's Amazing Grace, presented this 21st day of October, excuse me, 25th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2020. And then it says Russell Temple, Christian Methodist Episcopal Church located at 509 North Alfred Street, 507 North Alfred Street, Alexandria, Virginia. And then it has Reverend Michelle F. Parker as the pastor. And so we say congratulations, Context Associates, for the hard work you have done. Amen. And again, we want to thank our teachers, Sister Vanessa Green, Sister Louise Hardy, Sister Veronica Pace, and Dr. Brett Smith, who did an awesome job in teaching you on Wednesday, on Tuesdays and Saturday. They went through three rigorous, rigorous, excuse me, training workshops, and they endured. And not only did they do those three workshops, but they had to take a class on learning how to work with research participants. And they stayed the course. It was a three hour course online and they did not give up, but they continue so that they could serve the members of Russell Temple CME Church. So can we give each of them a round of applause for the work that they have done? Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Parker. And thank you to those who were supporting you. One of the second questions Usually when you get your advanced degree, they call and give you a mentor. One of the second questions they ask is, do you have a support system? So thank you support system for hanging in there because that is very important to accomplishing your goal. We will now have our special prayer, a prayer for government, healing and peace by Dr. Brett Smith, Sister Dorothy Outlaw and Brother Mitchell Boudreaux in that order. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So glad that we're all here today. Let us all bow our heads and pray, please. Thank you, God, for letting us be here today. We know that we have an important day coming up, God, and that's election day on Tuesday. Please help us, God, to just understand the sacrifices that our ancestors made to have this privilege and to have this right to vote. And please help us to ensure that we will be able to vote, Lord, and please just protect and keep those of us under your arm and your armor of protection, God. And please, regardless of the results, God, please just help us to heal as a country. Help us to heal as a nation, Lord. Please help us just to stop the bickering and the polarization that currently exists in the government, God. Please help the government officials understand the reason why they are in office 
which is to look out for their people, God, and to really ensure that the, our welfare is in their best interest, God, so that we can just continue healing, God, and we can continue serving you, Lord. Please protect our nation in this turbulent, in these turbulent times, Lord, and just really just continue praying, God, for those government officials as well, God, so that they can have sense, God, and just look out for us, God. But let us all understand, God, that it's in you whom we trust and that we get your power, get our power ultimately from you, Lord. So please just protect this nation, God. Please protect our country and everybody around, God, and just keep your arms of safety around us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning. This is Dorothy Outlaw. I will be praying a prayer of healing. And let us pray. God, we cry out to you for, for healing, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect us, Lord, as we would, us, especially those of us most vulnerable during this coronavirus time. Move us to reach out in love to our neighbors near and far so that the so that we humble, may be humbled, exalted, the hungry filled with their knees. Grant us the courage not to rush back to our old ways, but to rebuild our world together, creating foundations of justice with equality, healing and peace for all. In your name, Jesus, we pray, amen. Dear Jesus, divine physician and healer of the sick. We turn to you in this time of sorrow with our gentle love and grant us the grace and strength to accept this burden. Dear God, we place our worries in your hands. We place our sick under your care and humbly ask that you restore your servant to health again. Above all, grant us the grace to acknowledge your will and know that whatever you do, you do for the love of us. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Dr. Smith, Sister Outlaw, and Brother um, Bugo for those prayers. They are timely as we look at the world today. So we want to thank you for those prayers. We will have the ministry of art, Jesus will fix it, followed by the gospel message, peace in times of perplexity by our very own Reverend Michelle F. Parker. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble, I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, but that's all right because Jesus We'll fix it after a while. I have any witnesses in the house today that know that Jesus will fix it after a while. Come on, come on, bless the Lord this afternoon. Jesus will fix it after a while. We do honor the God of ordinary, the God of somebody, the God of nobody, the God of anybody, the God who is, the God who was, and the God who is to come again soon. Here at the temple, our mission statement is to develop and multiply disciples to advance the kingdom of God. We do this through our 4G strategy approach. We gather for worship as we grow in our discipleship and give of our stewardship so we can go into the highways and the byways and demonstrate the love of God. We say thank you to all who participated in the liturgy this afternoon. Exhorter Sherman, Brother Foster, Sister Tucker. We also thank Brother Dylan Sherman, amen, who did a pitch hit this afternoon. We also wanna thank Sister Golden. You sang that song, girl, trust me. Just know that I'm your manager, Sister Golden. Amen, amen. Sister Green, we thank you for that innovation by having that video clip, which was awesome. And also you giving us that exhortation to go out and vote. Sister Anderson, I'm going to pay my tithes when I finish preaching. Amen, amen, amen. Dr. Smith, Sister Outlaw, and Brother Boudreaux, 
thank you for prayer. If there's ever time that we need to lift up prayer, the time is now. And to all of those who are working behind the scenes, Dr. O, Brother and Sister Adams, Sister Hardy, and again, Exhorter Sherman, thank you so much for all that you do to make it happen. In addition, I want to give a special shout out to Brother Brassfield, who led our church school lesson this morning, Loving by Ser Serving. He did the darn thing, Brother Johnson. He did a stupendous job of integrating the lesson with today's times as well as our previous Bible study on God's amazing grace. Our church school and our Board of Christian Education and Formation are on the ball as they integrate, innovate, and motivate this new novel idea of having the men facilitate the church school lessons during the entire month of November. Ain't no stopping us now because we are on the move. We also wanna pause and thank God for all of our friends and visitors and the ministers who are visiting with us today. We salute Reverend Phyllis, we salute Minister Smith and Dr. Holbrook for visiting with us. Before I move to my sermon, I want to also recognize another group who also helped me with my Doctor of Ministry project. While the Context Associates helped me to form and fashion the actual project, it was the professional, I mean, I'm sorry, it was the um, people who registered you, as well as those who gave the commercials to recruit you that aided in this process. And so we wanna give a shout out to, to our registrars and they are Sister Kimberly Carter, praise God, amen as well as Sister Jonna Hardy. Both of them did an awesome job behind the scene, recruiting and making sure that you would participate in this Bible study, God's Amazing Grace. But also we needed some people to actually do commercials and they did their own design. They designed their commercial and they did that willingly, voluntarily, and I am grateful. And these are the persons who did their own commercial. Sister Jonna Hardy, Sister Kimberly Carter, Sister Wanda Wynn, and Sister Louise Hardy. We also salute our tech guru, <laughs> Dr. O, who is the man when it comes to technology. And if y'all don't hear it, Exhorter Sherman is saying, that's my, my man, that's my man, that's my man. <laughs> Amen. As we continue in our worship service, if you have a copy of the word, I invite you to turn with me to the gospel according to Matthew. It is the first book of the New Testament, chapter 26. I'll be reading verses one through five, and I'm gonna skip down to verses 47 through 52. Again, Matthew's gospel, chapter 26, verses one through five and then verses 47 through 52. And I will be reading from the New International Version. Hear the words according to the gospel writer of Matthew. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, as you know, the Passover is two days away and the son of man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, And they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. Verses 47 through 53. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, greetings rabbi and kissed him. Jesus replied, do what you came for friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. Verse 51, with that, one of Jesus's companions reached for his sword, drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest 
cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? Verse 52 and 53 again. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? And with that, I wanna tag for a subject, peace in the midst of perplexity. Peace in the midst of perplexity. Before I continue, I always like to tell a little joke. Here we go. Melania dies and goes to heaven where she meets St. Peter. She notices that there are clocks everywhere, exhorted Sherman. She asks St. Peter, why are there so many clocks here in heaven? St. Peter tells her that each clock represents a person's life on earth. And every time a person tells a lie, the clock ticks off one second at a time. Well, whose clock is this, Melania asks. It looks like the second hand never moved. St. Peter explains that the clock's hand never moved because it belonged to Mother Teresa, who never told a lie her whole life. Melania asked St. Peter, well, whose clock is this? St. Peter said the next clock belonged to Abraham Lincoln. And since he only told two lies his whole life, only two seconds have clicked. Melania asked one more question. Well, St. Peter, <laughs> where's my husband Donald's clock? St. Peter said Donald's clock is in Jesus's office. The hands were moving so fast that Jesus decided to use it as a fan. <laughs> Some of you will get that when you go home. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I need your strength and power to help me through this sacred hour. Endow me, Lord, with your anointing. Give me clarity of speech. Make preaching easy, Lord. Help me preach words that will inspire and motivate us to become agents of change in the midst of perplexity. Stir up the gifts in us, Lord, so that we can be used as instruments of your glory. Teach us how to demonstrate and live a life of peace as we navigate through life. This is the hour of transformation. Transform our hearts, our minds, and our souls as we embody your example of peace. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He who has ears, let him hear what the church has to say. She who has ears, let her hear what the church has to say. In the matchless, majestic name of the master, we pray. Let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Peace in the midst of perplexity. Sister Manning, there are times in our lives where things seem to be out of control. Our finances, our finances need an overhaul. We rob Peter to pay Paul. Every day, millions of people have to make a decision as to whether to buy food or medicine. Do I put gas in the car or pay the electric bill? Our debt income ratio is simply out of control. Brother feels our children are out of control. Since the pandemic, suicide rates among young people are on an upward movement. Pot parties are popping up everywhere. Young people are flocking to overcrowded clubs, house parties and block parties as if the pandemic does not exist. If we read the newspaper, turn on the news or play the car radio, we find endless examples of how the United States is out of control. If somebody with some sense and intelligence does not take the reins, if we as God's people don't humble ourselves and pray, we are headed towards turmoil and turbulence. Reverend Harris, The Temptations recorded a song in April of 1970 entitled Ball of Confusion, that's what the world is today. 
even though the song was recorded 50 years ago, the lyrics are still relevant today. People moving in, people moving out. Why? Because of the color of the skin. Run, 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 but you sure can't hide. An eye for an eye, a two for a two. Vote for me and I'll set you free. Rap on, brother. Rap on. Well, the only person talking about love thy brother is the preacher. And it seems nobody's interested in learning but the teacher. Segregation, determination, demonstration, integration, aggravation, humiliation, obligation to our nation, ball of confusion. That's what the world is today. Hey, hey. Brother Hardy, as the 2020 presidential election draws near, one thing is clear. America seems to be one ball of confusion. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. The dictionary defines perplexity as the state of confusion or uncertainty. Perplexity can be tangled, chaotic condition or situation. If I can keep it 100, Brother Adams, our country is a ball of confusion. And this state of confusion and mayhem has left many of us feeling insecure, uncertain, perplexed, apprehensive, and yes, even anxious. Let me see if I can break it down like a fraction. Sister Tyler, as the coronavirus soars across the country, charting a single day record of 99,155 new cases as of Friday and surpassing 9 million cases nationwide, tracing the path of the pandemic in the United States is no longer simply challenging, but also perplexing. Gone are the days when Americans can easily understand the virus by tracking rising case numbers back to discrete sources, the crowded factories, the troubled nursing homes, and the rowdy bars. Sister Thorne, there are so many cases in so many places that they have no idea where the virus is spreading. The spreading of the virus is moving like wildflowers. And even health officials have all but given up trying to track and figure out who is giving the virus to whom. The world is a ball of confusion. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. Can I push it? Then there is the great education quandary. Do we send our children back to school? Should we reopen the school? There are some parents who feel it is unsafe to send their children to school during this pandemic while other parents feel it is not their responsibility to teach their children at home and how to navigate through virtual learning, especially when the parents are working remotely from home as well. A ball of confusion, that's what the world is today. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. Can I push it, Russell Temple? America is angry from protests over persistent racial injustice to white nationalists, link counter protests. Anger is on display across this country. Dr. Smith, this national fury relates to social and economic inequality, race and police injustices, and the government's lack of response to the coronavirus health issue. It is also due in large part to deliberate and strategic choices made by American politicians to stoke voter anger for their own electoral advantage. Can I get an amen? President Trump's attempt to enrage his base are so plentiful that the nation, a progressive magazine, called him a merchant of anger. Meanwhile, his opponent, Joseph Biden, elicits anger towards the president, calling President Trump a toxic presence who has has cloaked America in darkness. The world is a ball of confusion. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. Sister Yanni, I believe there are people on Zoom this afternoon who would agree with me. For the first time in my adult life, it is easy for me to foresee the possibility of a genuine constitutional crisis in the United States of America. For the past several years, there has been an increase and partisan enmity, excuse me, in the United States with growing alarm. 
multiple social, cultural, and religious factors are converging to create a politically toxic stew. Brother Cora, there is a surge in voter suppression claims and mail-in ballot controversies. Partisans refuse to concede, and many are already declaring that the election is illegitimate. President Trump himself has indicated he may not accept the outcome. What happens then, you may ask? According to the news, Sister Anderson, unless there is a biding landscape, the scenario would be street level violence and political crisis. America is being pulled apart. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. Manager Smith, nobody knows more about street level violence and political crisis than our friend, Jesus. This event was so compelling and so powerful that all four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John included this narrative in their own book. Here is a testimony of the text. Judas knew the chief priests and elders hated Jesus. So he decided to join and help them find a way to kill him. The chief priests and the elders liked Judas's betrayal plan so that they immediately sent Roman soldiers and temple guards to the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Jesus. Sounds familiar? Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock him up. Lock him up. You could almost take this same scenario and fast forward to everyday current events in the United States. Since the authorities feared how those who had seen Jesus perform, many miracles might respond, they loved the idea of arresting Jesus when the only ones around him were his disciples. Judas immediately identified Jesus by kissing him. You know, the kiss of betrayal. Sister Fields, Peter saw the arresting party move toward Jesus. That's a Southeast move, y'all. In response to the threat, Peter drew out his sword and cut off the right ear of the servant of the high priest. That's a Northeast move, y'all. Let me talk to the people on my left. Here, Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus, steps out, steps forward, to deal with this state of confusion by drawing his sword. Let me speak to the people on my right. Here, Simon Peter, the one who was told to love your neighbor as yourself, responding to the crisis by drawing his weapon. Let me talk to the people in the center. Here is Peter, the one who told the Lord to wash not only my feet, Brother Brasfield, but my whole body springs into action, yields his sword, and cuts off the ear in response to the perplexity of the situation. How do I know? Baby joy, for the Bible tells me so. The scripture reports in verse 41, with that, one of Jesus's companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And in cross-referencing with John, Chapter 18, verse 10, John identifies this companion as Jesus' disciple, Simon Peter. Of course, Kenise, none of us have room to brag or to boast. All of us know people who are just like Peter. Can you tell your neighbor, Pastor, not talking to me? They like to cut people down and tear them to sheds. As a matter of fact, they will let other people know just what they did. Yeah, I got them told. I let them have it with both barrels. I put my religion on the shelf and cussed them up one side and down the other. Then had the nerve to try to high five somebody. Even as we look at the world today, we have people who are unfriending people on Facebook just because they are Republicans or just because they are Democrats. We need peace in the midst of perplexity. We cut people's ears off if they are Trump supporters. And we do the same thing if they are Biden supporters. I saw recently on Facebook where people are preparing for street level violence. 
talking about I'm not my ancestors. You can come if you want to, but I'm locked and loaded. Can I tell you something? We need peace in the midst of perplexity. But notice what Jesus does in the text, Sister Troy. He proceeds to tell Peter why his actions were wrong. Check out verse 52. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. In other words, Jesus was letting Peter know that we need to exemplify peace in the midst of perplexity. Yes, our world is full of violence. And yes, our daily lives can be marred by conflict and turmoil. But Jesus illustrates peace to his disciples that surpasses all understanding. The Old Testament says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus said that he's coming to show us a new way. He shows us that peace is the way. Dr. Holbrook, Proverbs 16, 17 promises this. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. I got any witnesses in the house today? Isaiah assures us in chapter 26, verse three, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And then Matthew declares in chapter five, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. As I close, we all have the freedom to choose how we will handle difficult situations when they arise in our lives. Since many hardships are unavoidable, we are left with the challenge of how to make the best out of a turbulent situation. Jesus gave us the perfect solution. He offered peace in the midst of perplexity. Peter chose to meet violence with violence. That's what I used to do. But as I continue to grow in the Lord, as I continue to see examples of what it looked like from the saints of God, and as I continue to hear God's word, I begin to change and to transform. I no longer wanted to fight. I no longer wanted to pull out my sword and cut your ear off. Peter chose to meet violence with violence. How will you respond the next time you are faced with a difficult situation? That's a ball of confusion. I hope you will remember Jesus and resemble his peace. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says this, but unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Not the Republicans, not the Democrats, not Biden, not Trump, but the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Amen, amen, amen. And so I offer you the Prince of Peace who is able to help us navigate through those situations of confusion, turmoil, and turbulence. What will you do when that situation arrives? Will you choose violence or will you choose peace in the midst of perplexity? God bless you today. Perhaps there's someone here today on Zoom who is searching their hearts and their minds and wondering what must they do to give their life to Christ. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no woman, no boy or girl can come to the Father but through Jesus the Christ. The Bible also tells us that if we confess with our, our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus lived, that he died, and that he rose again, that you shall be saved. It's really not that complicated. It's a matter of belief. It's a matter of faith. And know that there's nothing that you can do, amen, to earn God's salvation. It's through grace. It's the grace of God, which is a free gift that allows us through faith to receive salvation. 
if there's someone today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as his or her personal savior, I invite you to join the body of Christ today. Tomorrow is not promised, and today is all that we have. And so I want to encourage you, I want to employ you to accept Jesus as your Savior today. And you may be saying, I'm trying to clean myself up, and I get that. I really do, because you want to give God the best that you have. But please understand that Christ already died, and when he died, his sins covered our sins of yesterday. His, I'm sorry, his blood covered our sins of yesterday. The blood covered our sins of today and they will cover our sins of tomorrow. And the only thing that Jesus has is that we will confess our sins to him. And he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Is there one here today? You can text me in the chat privately, amen. Or you can call me on the telephone and we can continue this conversation. But please know that it is God's will that no man, no woman would die and not receive his salvation and be able to live eternally in heaven. Don't miss your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I was asked this question years ago, and the answer is, she knows. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Can we just put our hands together and give God praise? God wants to use us as instruments of peace. We know what the world looks like. It's a world of, it's a ball of confusion, and God wants to use us as vessels of love and vessels of peace in the midst of confusion. Today is first Sunday and this is our communion Sunday, amen. And if you have not um, taken the time to prepare your communion element, your juice or your water, your bread or your crackers, would you do that at this time as we prepare our hearts and minds to do our communion ritual, amen. All righty, as we look to the screen, we will do our prayer of general confession, the prayer of general confession. While you remain on mute, would you say the prayer with me? Amen. Almighty God, make of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let the church say amen. The prayer of consecration. Let us pray. Almighty God, our heavenly father, who thy tender mercy did give thy only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross of our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the, of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy son, our savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let the church say, amen, amen, amen. At this time, if you would take your communion element, let us take the bread. And let us eat it together, feasting in our heart, the love that God has for you and for me, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's in the shedding of the blood that we are atoned for our sins. Let us drink it together. While we remain on mute, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. We will have our remarks by Zorda Sherman. Just want to thank the pastor for that wonderful sermon, peace in the times of perplexity. Will you choose peace or will you choose violence? And we can choose peace by going to the polls on Tuesday to make sure that we vote. I like the song, the question is, it says, will I do his will? It's up to you to make that decision on what you're gonna do. So we wanna thank you, Reverend Parker, for all those insightful tidbits in the sermon to make us think and to want to serve and do his will. We're gonna close with our remarks this morning. We just wanna remind everyone, our first quarterly conference will be held Monday, November 9th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. All team leaders are asked to submit your quarterly conference report to Sister Vanessa Green today. We will hold a brief church conference, which is scheduled for Thursday, November 5th at 7 p.m. in preparation for the quarterly conference. Followed by that, there will be a meeting with the contacts associates and the Bible study teachers on that same day, Thursday, November 5th. Please remember to submit Um, your SMART goals today. And remember that Bible study will resume again this this Tuesday at noon, Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 10 a.m. Please read Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 3 and Acts chapter 9, 1 through 8. Just a reminder that next Sunday is Boot Camp Sunday. Feel free to dress in your military fatigues as we honor the veterans of Russell Temple CME. This will be posted on our Facebook page. Please like it and share it and make sure that you continue to play for those who are on our um, prayer list, Um, the sick and the shut-in, our college students and those who are grieving. We want to make sure that we pray for them. Remember that prayer is powerful, powerful. It can heal. Prayer can give and prayer can change lives. So we want to make sure that we pray for those. Also, before I turn it over to the pastor, just remember, when you go through deep waters, that the Lord will be with you. That's Isaiah 43, 2. And I'll turn it over to the pastor. Amen. Again, we want to thank God for the healing of Sister Harriet Anderson, who's with us today and who gave our uh, um, uh, appeal for offering today. God is a healer. Amen. And it's evident um, through our prayers the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous, that prayer, as Sister um, um, Sherman said, is very powerful. So we thank God that she received a negative report from her doctor as well as her husband. I do ask if you would join me in prayer for Brother Larry Foster's sister. Her name is Gloria Brown. She is in critical condition in the hospital. So if you would write that name down, amen. Gloria Brown, she is in critical condition in the hospital in Oregon. 
So please lift up her name as well as the family. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. A shout out again to our tech people. <laughs> and we thank God for you all praying. Amen. The devil thought he has. Amen. But we serve a God who can. <laughs> Again, to all of our visitors, we thank you for visiting with us. A shout out to you and your family members and your friends and to all the ministers who are with us today. We count it, amen, a blessing to have you sharing with us. And some of you have already had church this morning, but you dared to come back again. And we are so grateful. Praise God for you. Amen. All right, in the book of Jude, the first chapter, the last chapter, the only chapter, you will find these words. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Amen.